Welcome to the Behavioral Sciences section of our Practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 1 to 5. So first, I'll show you the questions so that you can try them on your own. Here's question 1, question 2, question 3, question 4, and question 5. Now let's go through the questions together and go through all of the different answers. So question one is saying long division is a method that allows one to find a number that results from dividing one number by another up to a given number of decimal places. It guarantees that one will find a number as long as one follows the method correctly, but it may take a long time for large numbers. What type of problem solving does long division exemplify? So we want to know the type of problem solving that we're talking about here. And then the main three that we covered in the behavioral sciences are trial and error, heuristics, and algorithm. So a quick example of each is if you're going through the grocery store and you're looking for something and you don't know which aisle it's in, trial and error would be checking everything and then one by one getting rid of what's wrong and then eventually you're gonna to get to the right answer. So you go through all the different aisles until you eventually find the product that you're looking for. That's trial and error. Heuristics is kind of like a shortcut, a rule of thumb. If you know the type of product it is and you know where those types of products are located in the supermarket then you can just go directly to that section and start looking at the aisles there and then finally an algorithm is when you have a certain rule that you follow and following that rule makes it simpler to find or to solve whatever type of problem you're going through so it's a set of rules and you just keep going by the rules again and again until you get to your answer so in the shopping experiment in the shopping example trial or algorithm would be if you looked at for example every third shelf so if you said to make this easier I'm gonna look at every third shelf instead of every single shelf and maybe you had another friend and maybe they looked at every third shelf for, from their perspective or something like that if you just had a rule that you followed like we're gonna look at every third shelf that would be an algorithm and then it's not inductive reasoning inductive reasoning is not even a type of problem solving that's when you look at the actual results in front of you and then go backwards and try to make a theory. Like for example, if you had a bag and you know you know it contains 20 balls and some are black, some are white, and you take out four, you see that you got three black balls and then one white ball. You go backwards and then you make a theory that in this bag there are 15 black balls and then five white balls just because you saw one ratio and then you're theorizing that that's the ratio that the 20 balls are actually present in. So that's inductive reasoning, and it's not really relevant to what we're talking about here. So it's going to be either A, B, or C. And then long division, the one it matches up best with, is an algorithm. Because the way long division works is that you have a set of rules. You take whatever number that you're trying to divide, and then the one that you're dividing it by, you see if it fits. If it doesn't, then we have rules. Like you add a decimal place, and then add a zero, and all of that, all the rules for long division, there are a set of rules that we follow and then we keep going through whatever the rules are like if yes then do this if no then do this other thing that is an algorithm so that's the type of problem solving that long division falls under it's not a heuristic it's not a type of shortcut more of a shortcut would be for example if we are adding two even numbers and we want to know is our result going to be odd or even well you can say that if we're adding two even numbers our result is also going to be even that's kind of more of a rule, like a, a rule of thumb. That would be more of a heuristic, not an algorithm, because there's not like a set pattern of rules that we follow. And then it's definitely not trial and error. So long division is going to be a type of algorithm. In question two, we're asked which of the following questions would not appropriately target identifying an individual's social identity. So we want to find out which one is not going to ask someone about their social identity. So by social identity, we are referring to the group that one feels that they belong in in society. And then people have a lot of different groups that they belong in. Like you could have your religious group that is a part of your identity, but then also where you live, what school you go to. So those type of groups are all part of your social identity. Question A would be asking which religious group do you belong to? Yes, that would be a question that can target someone's social identity. So it's not the answer. B, same thing. If we ask someone, do you consider yourself a nerd? We're asking, do they identify as a part of this group? 
who goes along with nerd culture, whatever that culture may be. So that is also related to social identity. So is C. C is saying, for which football team do you consider yourself a fan? So being a fan of a specific team means that you're part of the group of the fans that are a part of that team and then you're not a part of the group that are fans of other teams. So it is part of your social identity. But then D is not. D is saying, is it important for you to be perceived as clean by your friends? This is more so a question about the person's impression, like impression management. Do you want others to have like a good impression of who you are as a person? It's not so much your social identity, like which group do you identify as being a part of? Because we don't have groups in society that are like, you know, people who wash themselves a lot and then they're clean or hygienic. We don't have like hygienic and then a non-hygienic group. That's more of like a trait that maybe you can give to certain groups, but it's not an actual group itself. So therefore, for question two, the best answer would be D. In question three, it says an experiment is constructed to train rats to press a lever. Five seconds after the lever is pressed, a treat is released. This is referred to as a what? So we can have a schedule that's either fixed ratio or fixed interval. Ratio would mean that you do something, whatever action, a certain number of times before getting your reward or punishment. And then interval means a certain amount of time passes. So we're told in this, in this experiment, five seconds after the action, which is pressing the lever, the treat is released. So because it's always a time thing, it's always a duration, it's not going to be either of the ratio answers. And so it's going to be fixed interval schedule. A variable interval schedule would be if the rat presses the lever and then maybe five seconds after, maybe 10 seconds after, it always changes the amount of time that passes before the treat is released. That would be a var variable interval schedule. But we're told in this case that it's always five seconds after. So that's a fixed schedule, fixed interval. Now in question four, it says an experimenter by the name of Menard investigated the treatment of African American miners inside and outside of the mines. In the mines, most white miners treated African American co-workers with respect. However, above ground, the same white miners treated the same African Americans poorly. Which of the following underlies the reasons for the different treatment inside and outside the mines? So key thing here is that in the mines, the white miners treated the African American miners with respect, and then above ground, they treated them poorly. So the thing that is underlying their behavior, we have to figure out what that is. And so let's knock out some answers. It's not going to be racism because like what is really racism? Racism is kind of like hate that you show towards a certain group. And then because of that, it leads to some action. So racism can kind of be like a type of discrimination, but it doesn't seem clear that it's just racism, which is shaping their treatment. We're asked, what is the reason for the different treatment? Well, we can say racism could be the treatment the reason for the treatment above ground because they're treated poorly but then if they're treated with respect inside the mind we can't say that's due to racism then that answer doesn't really make sense and then d we can also eliminate intergroup conflict for similar reasons first of all it doesn't seem like there is a real conflict between the miners it's not like there's some competition and it's not like they're sports teams or something where they're competing with each other and then there's an in group and an out group and there's something that they want to do better than the other group they're all miners and they're, they're they seem like they're all part of the same group like they're mining for the same company the same employer it's just that they happen to be of different races so there isn't an inherent intergroup conflict that's set up between the two groups it's just there's something else in the thinking behind the white miners which establishes their behavior so it can either be discrimination or prejudice so prejudice is an actual belief that you hold and it's kind of a negative belief against another group. And then discrimination is when you act upon that belief. Like, for example, you might think if you're an employer, you're hiring someone, you might think that women don't work as hard as men. That's your prejudice. But it's not discrimination until you actually don't hire the wo woman specifically because she is a woman. That would be discrimination. 
but between discrimination and prejudice, the better answer would be prejudice for this question because we can say above ground that could be discrimination because they're treating them poorly based on the inherent prejudices that they hold, but then that discrimination doesn't explain why inside the mine the miners treated the white miners treated the African American miners with respect. Discrimination would not explain that because discrimination is not going on inside the mine. So prejudice is a better answer because prejudice is this social belief that we hold and then it's known to be affected by your peer group and the environment around you as well. So the, your environment, your social environment imposes these prejudices on you and because of it changing, it can also change the types of prejudices that you hold. So it's prejudice is more of a mindset. It's what the person thinks. So discrimination is more of an action. So it's because of the way that they were thinking. That's what determined their behavior. So inside the mine, the miners just see everyone around them as another miner. And they know that if they kind of are fighting with each other, that's not good because inside a mine, you can have kind of dangerous conditions. It's just better for everyone as they work as a whole and they just get their job done. And then above ground, they can have different, they have a different environment. They feel more so like how other peer members might view African-Americans. And then that's when they treat them more poorly. So it's because of prejudice and prejudice can shift with environment. That's why this would be the best answer for question four. In question five, it says Vygotsky's zone of proximal development refers to what? So the zone of proximal development theory, it refers to what a child can learn on their own versus what they need someone else to instruct them. So as a child growing up, there's some basic things that the person can pick up by themselves, but other things which require more, more training or more of a skill set to adopt they need a tutor to teach them that. So that's what the zone of proximal development is referring to. So we're looking for an answer like that. A is saying the cognitive abilities that develop in a particular chronological order. No, there are a lot of theories in psychology about the different stages of life and the things that develop at a state, certain stage, but that's not what this zone of proximal development theory is referring to. B is saying it refers to the regions of the brain that develop in order from like back to front and inside to outside. No, it's not really about brain development. And C is saying it's the distance between what a lear learner can accomplish independently and what a learner can accomplish with guided instruction. So that's correct. There's a certain point at which a learner can do things on their own, but that's a, at, at some point they need a tutor or some kind of mentor. They need guided instruction. So that is what this theory is talking about. And then D is also incorrect, it's saying the discrepancy between an individual's most and least developed cognitive abilities. No, that's not something which this theory is referring to. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course on teachable.com. The link is in the description below. So in this course, we have a lot more questions and we do the same thing that we did here. We go through the different answers and break down why the correct answer is correct and the other ones are incorrect. So make sure to check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.